Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Martha D. Pasquale, and I am honored to serve this year as the Baylor Women's Council of Houston president. Um, we are thrilled to have you here with us today. The Baylor Women's Council of Houston exists to support um, Baylor students from the Houston area with scholarships uh, in this current fiscal, uh, current academic year. We have three students who we are supporting and we have a board member who keeps up with them regularly uh, and reports that they are all doing well and thriving in Waco right now. Um, and then our other function is to provide connection opportunities, educational uh, and inspiring opportunities for Baylor alumni, women and friends in the Houston area. Um, thank you so much to those of you who are members of the Baylor Women's Council of Houston. We are quite appreciative of your support during um, an odd year in which we are unable to gather and be here together as we would be during other times. And to those of you who may not be members of the Baylor Women's Council of Houston, welcome. We're um, thankful to have you here with us today and we welcome you to join the Women's Council of Houston, whether you're a Houston resident or not. Um, we're just uh, glad to have you join us. And I wanna give a special thank you to our Emerald T co-chairs this year, Carol Menefee Jensen and Stephanie Johnson. They have done a fantastic job at uh, being nimble and um, swerving to a virtual format. Typically this T would be a fellowship opportunity uh, to come around the table and be with one another in person uh, and our chairs have done a wonderful job in bringing an exciting uh, lineup for you today. So thank you all, all again for being here and I will pass it off to Stephanie. Good afternoon, I'm Stephanie Johnson. Um, as uh, Martha stated, I am a co-chair for to uh, today's event and excited to um, share some interesting food and fashion tips with you all today. Um, and I have the pleasure of welcoming our first guest speaker. Um, and her name is Mary Ellen. She's also a fellow Baylor grad herself. Um, and she is a nationally recognized dietitian, um, one of my personal favorite bloggers. Um, so be sure to look her up on Instagram and her blog after this as well. Um, and she is the um, author behind milkandhoneynutrition.com. Um, she also has a brand new um, cookbook that just landed, I think about a week ago, that we have a door prize for today that you can win as well, called the Easy Diab Diabetes Cookbook. Um, and she's known for her easy and joyful approach to nutrition for diabetes and other chronic conditions. Um, she's done several media interviews, TV segments, social media campaigns, um, and really been online and in that stratosphere for um, a good while. Um, and she strives really to help us bring back the joy um, and health in our kitchens for especially consumers impacted by diabetes. Um, she's been interviewed by numerous media outlets, including Diabetes Forecast, Live Strong, Yahoo News, Real Simple, Healthline, KPRC Channel 2, Fox News, and many more. The list could go on and on. Um, she lives in the Houston area with her husband and two daughters, um, and she is with us today. And so I pass the mic to Mary Ellen. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, and like Stephanie said, I graduated from Baylor in 2008. It seems like forever ago, but um, Kind of as Stephanie was alluding to, my goal uh, as a media dietitian is really to just help people find, find some joy in food again. So I'm gonna share uh, kind of my philosophy on how faith and food intersect and how a lot of times we don't realize that, but they actually do. It's kind of cool how God designed it that way. Uh, and then we'll get into kind of some specific uh, kind of take home nutrition tips. And if you have any questions about any of the stuff I'm talking about as I'm going through this, uh, please feel free to drop it. We have a little Q&A box down there uh, that you can drop your questions in. I think we'll have about time for about maybe five minutes worth of questions at the end. So feel free to leave questions there. Um, as Stephanie said, uh, I am a registered dietitian and blogger, uh, kind of fell into it accidentally after my second daughter was born. I was a new uh, stay-at-home mom and realized I did not want to be a stay-at-home mom and so kind of started this as a hobby and here I am six years later with a new cookbook that just released uh, about a week and a half ago, which uh, that we're doing a door price for a copy for and you can check that out um, anywhere books are sold. Um, I did step out of the Baylor bubble briefly after my undergrad and got my master's at the University of Texas 
here in Houston, but I refuse to wear orange. I, I always wore my green and gold. Um, and now I work as a blogger, recipe developer, and media spokesperson for different commodity boards, food groups, and uh, wellness organizations. Um, so before I launch into what I actually want to talk about today, I want to read you one of my favorite quotes. Uh, and it's actually from a book that was written, I think, seven, eight years ago excuse me, seven, eight years ago uh, by Shauna Nequist uh, called uh, bread, and, uh, bread and Wine. So this is what she says. She says, when you eat, I want you to think of God, of the holiness of hands that feed us, of the provision we are given every time we eat. When you eat bread and you drink wine, I want you to think about the body and the blood every time, not just when the bread and wine show up in church, but when they show up anywhere, on a picnic table or a hardwood floor or a beach. Um, and she kind of goes on to talk about this beautiful illustration uh, that, the Bible, that the Bible gives us um, a food. And I don't think it was um, any accident that God chooses to use food as um, a literary example throughout the Bible. So food is this intensely emotional and spiritual thing. And as much as the world and we ourselves may try to convince, uh, convince ourselves otherwise that it's just a physical fuel, I think we all know that it is so much more than that. And that's why making changes to the way you eat can be so difficult and such an emotional process. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But today I'm gonna to walk you through um, some principles about food that I think our culture has forgotten over the last few years um, and few decades, excuse me. Um, and some of these come straight from the Bible itself. Um, but I want you to also remember that like God intended food to be a happy and joyful thing. It was not meant to be this restrictive thing that we control or that causes us stress or that we don't look forward to. It was supposed to be this beautiful gift. And so I want you to keep that in the back of your head as we go through these. Um, and then I'll share a few nutritional nuggets at the end um, that we kind of talked about. And um, this is all kind of my, what I call food philosophy um, and why I believe food and the things we eat, but also our attitude about food are a way we can honor God and grow our walk with him. Um, I hope it resonates with you. Um, like we said, ask any questions if you have them. Uh, and I always have to give this little disclaimer, just keep in mind, anything we talk about today is general advice and not meant to be specific nutritional advice. If you are in need of that, I highly recommend you talk to your own registered dietitian or healthcare provider. Um, so what I believe about food, uh, number one, food is a gift from God. Um, and unfortunately that has been perverted in modern times. So the very first peak we get at this is Genesis 129, where God says, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed, this food will be for you. It was a gift. He gave it to us. He didn't have to. Um, and then again, in Exodus 33, um, God promises a land flowing with milk and honey. If you caught my business name, there's a reason for it. Um, milk and honey is also a trendy name right now, but it also has a lot of biblical significance. Um, God is literally saying that food can be a reward. And so when you hear that, that's probably a little bit counterintuitive to what you've heard, uh, you know, modern culture tell us is that you shouldn't reward yourself with food promotes bad habits, when in reality, that, that's what God did throughout the Bible. This land flowing with milk and honey was this beautiful reward at the end of a years long uh, journey. It was something to look forward to. We know that food is nourishing. We know that food is healing. Um, and food is meant to be celebrated. Think about any holiday celebration. What does it center around? It centers around the dinner table and food and what types of dishes are we looking forward to? Um, and then we skip forward a little bit into the New Test Testament where 1 Corinthians 6 is what tells us about our bodies are a temple and kind of how do we honor him with the food we eat and where where I feel like this gets twisted a little bit is we talk about, uh, you know, being healthy and taking care of our bodies and eating in a right way, but we forget the part about God didn't give us food so we could try to control it and restrict it and be all stressed out about it. That's, that's not good either. So it's important to remember that there's all, there's all sides of this conversation and we can't forget about that emotional and spiritual side of food. Um, it, and going along with that, it wasn't intended um, to be 
this like thing that we didn't think about, you know, our current modern culture kind of forces us into that sometimes where we need these quick, easy options. I'm going to share some of those with you in a minute. I promise I'm not going to stay all philosophical and biblical on you. Uh, we will get down to some take home tips, uh, but I do think it's important to kind of think about these things when we're thinking about what does it mean to be healthy? What does it mean to honor God and uh, in our food choices. Um, and so I want you to remember that food was meant to be nourishing and enjoyed. It was not meant to stress us out. Uh, it, it wasn't meant to be strictly controlled and manipulated. Um, and then that was 1 Corinthians 6. And then we skip down a few chapters to chapter 10, where we get this analogy of spiritual food and drink. And I think it's really important to sit here for a second and remember that God didn't make mistakes. So he chose this example. He chose to inspire um, these writers with this example for a reason. Um, this example of spiritual food and drink mirrors what ancient people knew, that food nourishes us. It wasn't associated with being this quick fix for anything. And people knew it was a gift that their life depended on and a gift that was to be celebrated. So all of these examples um, in scripture of food being a way to honor God and it being a gift he has given us. Um, but just like everything else on this earth, you know, kind of our human nature, uh, we kind of have a way of twisting and perverting things like we've seen. And so what I struggle with most as a nutrition professional is really when I meet people who are just so stressed out about food that they have let it consume them um, either to the point of it causing, you know, extra anxiety or, and stress, or to the point where they just don't enjoy food anymore. And, you know, there's two ends of the spectrum, but we need to kind of get back to this point of what a gift it is. Uh, it's no secret that I love food. I love cooking food. I love talking about food. And so kind of my goal in everything I do through my website, through my social media platforms, and through my book is um, specifically for people with diabetes, but also as a whole to really just bring that joy, that, that undertone of food being a gift and this great experience back to your kitchens and back to your homes. Um, so Keeping all that in the back of your mind, uh, I am going to share five foods that I think everybody should be including in their diet. Some of these are things that I think are just now we're starting to see come back around to people accepting. We made our way, and I grew up in the thick of it, uh, you know, in the, the 90s, early 2000s of low calorie, low fat, everything was about what diet you were on. And I do think we're seeing a shift in our culture of really prioritizing nourishing our bodies over what our bodies look like. But um, these are foods that I really kind of want to bring to the forefront. Maybe you already love them. Maybe you already eat them. If so, that's great. Keep them on your grocery list. And if not, maybe you can consider adding these. Um, and they're all centered around bringing fat back into our diets. Um, I think that's something that happened, like I said, in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, that um, those of us in the nutrition community are trying to rectify, trying to bring back to the forefront, and especially as women, uh, how important fat is to our diets. It's not the enemy, neither are carbs, by the way, uh, and more protein doesn't automatically make something healthier. Those are the fat fiber or fat carbs and protein are our three macronutrients that we need all of. We need all of those in great balance. And when I'm talking to people with diabetes or metabolic disorders, those are that's what I start with, that we need all of these nutrients that God designed to stay in balance in our bodies. And so that's kind of my goal is to teach you how to do that in a fun and joyful way. Um, and so what I talk about all the time is fat, fiber, and protein, and focusing on those three things every time you eat. If you can find uh, a source of those, uh, either individually or find foods that have all three, you are well on your way to eating balanced meals that you're going to enjoy and also that are going to satisfy you and keep you sustained. Um, so the first food I want to talk about is full fat dairy. Uh, and this is uh, kind of getting away from that idea of doing everything with skim milk or doing everything with low fat cheese or whatever it may be. One of the things about dairy, if you eat dairy, because um, I know there's people who have allergies or sensitivities or things, uh, is to make sure that you're choosing, that fat is there for a reason. It, um, it's what takes the longest for your body to digest, which is actually a good thing because that means it stays in your stomach longer and you get a more sustained supply of energy as opposed to if you just had carbohydrate or just had protein, where our body can process that a little bit quicker 
um, and which means you get a great boost of energy, but then it kind of falls off. Whereas if we have fat in our diet and you know, this first example is full fat dairy, uh, you get this nice steady supply of energy. Um, the example I always give um, when I'm talking about fat, fiber, and protein is if you think about every time you eat, you get energy and then it comes down and then it's time to eat again. What fat, fiber, and protein do is they push that curve down. So we get a nice steady supply instead of, you know, that big rise and then, you know, sugar crash, whatever term you want to use. Um, that's a real feeling you feel when that energy supply runs out. Um, the next thing would be peanuts or other tree nuts. Again, I know this is a common allergen for people. So obviously I'm not talking to you if that applies to you, but they're cheap. They're a great quality source of protein and of fat and of fiber usually. So we've got all those nutrients I said I love in there. Uh, third one being avocado. Uh, I don't know if I've ever met anybody who doesn't love avocado. And you know, here in Texas, we love our guacamole. Um, we did a happy dance in my house about a month ago. My youngest daughter finally accepted the fact that guacamole was a good thing and she loved it. And I feel like our lives have been changed for the better. Um, but avocados have fiber, they have healthy fats, and they uh, go well with pretty much any carbohydrate source you want to put them with. The fourth thing, kind of stepping out of the fat bubble for a second, um, but is probiotics. So a lot of people ask me when they find out I'm a dietitian, they, they want to ask, talk about supplements. They want to talk about what we eat. And I'm actually very cautious when it comes to supplements with people. Um, and I'm never going to recommend supplements unless I'm, you know, I know the individual nature of a situation, but there are very few um, supplements that I will kind of recommend across the board, but typically needing an, a, a probiotic supplement can be one of those because just the nature of our typical American diet is we don't really get good sources of probiotics um, in foods. These are things like kefir and kombucha and yogurt, fermented vegetables. Um, and while it's possible, and we are seeing more and more um, packaged products with uh, probiotics on them, that is one thing that's typically lacking in our diets. And so I always tell people to kind of evaluate that, talk to your doctor, uh, talk to your healthcare professional about where they think your needs are with that. And then the last one is beans and lentils. And so these do have a small amount of fat that I talked about, but the specific reason I wanna talk about these is their glycemic effect. And whether you have diabetes or not, you can benefit from the impact that beans and lentils have on blood sugar levels. And so they, they're a great source of protein, they're great for gut health because of that fiber, uh, but they also, we've seen from research, anytime you eat beans and lentils, they help stabilize blood sugar levels, which also means stabilize energy levels for up to 24 hours after you eat them, which is crazy to think about. And again, going back to this idea that food is a gift, like how cool is that, that God designed this food that way, that it could have that great of an impact on our bodies. And so as you can tell, I get fascinated by food and the way it works in our bodies. Um, it is just such an exciting thing. Um, so those are kind of quick five foods, I would say, if you're not regularly incorporating those into your diet, um, maybe try to start working those things in. And then how do, we, how do we take these foods and put them into a doable action plan for meals and things like that? Um, one of the things I talk about, if you follow me on Instagram, um, shameless plug, you can catch me over at Milk and Honey Nutrition, uh, or on my blog, I talk about snack meals all the time. So one of the things, that, while I want to help people find this joy in their kitchen again, I also want food to be easy for you. I want to give you doable solutions uh, that are going to take stress away from food and not add more to it. So one of those uh, things I talk about is snack meals. And they are essentially what it sounds like, combining a bunch of snacks. Um, and I'm not talking packaged snacks here where you're, you're kind of like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. Um, but a bunch of snacks into one meal. And so um, letting that be um, kind of what you choose to do for dinner. Uh, I call it the five minute meal solution. And who wouldn't love to be able to get dinner on the table in five minutes? So I'm going to go ahead. This is kind of the last thing we'll go over, but I'm going to share my screen. This is kind of my go-to snack meal solution. So you can see I've got some examples here that I've used in my own house, whether you want to put it in a fun bento box, whether you want to do it like a little charcuterie board style. Um, I saw a slide go through that you're learning, uh, people, we're going to learn how to make charcuterie boards at another event, or if you want to put it on a plate. But I want you to pick one to two fruits, one to two vegetables, 
one to two quality protein sources. This can be eggs, this can be meat, this can be cheese, it can be tofu, it can be uh, beans like we talked about, it can be uh, nuts. Um, I want you to pick a plant-based fat. Um, you can use nuts again there, you can do hummus, uh, you can do avocado, uh, you can do any sort of spread. Um, I want you to pick a crunchy carb. And this crunchy aspect really comes in from a palatability standpoint. It actually, we have data to support that the texture of our food and those varying textures actually impacts how satisfied we feel just as much as the taste. Um, this is especially great for kids to make sure you get something crunchy in there. So that can be crackers, it can be pretzels, you know, anything like that. It can be nuts again, and then a fun treat because who doesn't love a fun treat at the end of a meal, whether it's, you know, something sweet or something either you or your kids or your family are not expecting. Um, this is a great formula to follow. Uh, it's kind of my fallback. You know, those days we've all, whether you've had a long day at work, it's been a long day at school, life happens, something unexpected happens. Pretty much almost always, I bet you could throw together a snack meal and fill these buckets uh, and get a dinner on the table in five minutes. It really is that easy. Now you don't have to plate it like this, like I do here. Um, pretty looking plates do well on the internet and on social media. So that's why I do that. But more times than not, it's just me throwing some stuff on some plate, a plate or a big board and serving it to my family. And so I want, hopefully this is a tool you can use to kind of take some of that burden of preparing food off your plate. And this is just as great of an option and it only takes about five minutes. Do you have a couple of questions? Um, someone asked if you could just relist those five items. I think they want to write them down one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got full fat dairy. And so this um, applies to primarily where people are typically buying uh, versions that have had the milk, the, the fat taken out, which would be milk and yogurt. Um, I, I kid you not, if you go buy some whole milk yogurt, if you've never had it, you'll be blown away at how much more satisfied you are and how much better it tastes. Um, peanuts or other tree nuts is the second one. Uh, peanuts specifically, if you're not allergic, because they are such a cheap but quality source of protein uh, to get in at any time of day. Uh, avocado, uh, you know, like we said, guacamole, pretty much all forms are good. Uh, probiotics, uh, whether it's in food form or in a supplement form, if you're going to go the supplement route, I'd definitely check with your doctor or your dietitian. Um, and then the fifth one, it was beans and lentils for that um, kind of energy effect, glycemic effect that I talked about. Okay, we have another question rolling in. Um, can you use canned beans or do you have to use raw, soaked beans, et cetera? I don't know about you, but I don't have time to soak beans for 24 hours or however <laughs> long in my kitchen. Um, so if you wanna use canned, that's great. My only tip would be, um, cause that's primarily what I use as well, um, buy the low sodium or no salt added versions and then just give them a quick rinse um, underwater before you use them. Uh, some recipes you'll find if you're using them for recipes will say like to save the juice that's in the canned um, for certain aspects of the recipe. But if it doesn't say that, just give them a rinse under the water and you're good to go. Great. Um, one more question. This is for my chair is, do you have any thoughts or feedback on when you're shopping for these items to go organic or non-organic or what's your kind of view on that? I think you have to uh, stop and consider what your, what your budget allows for and what your goals are. One of the, and this is just my opinion, um, but one of the downsides of the organic food move, movement is it has kind of demonized traditional fruits and vegetables to where people think if they can't afford to buy organic, they just shouldn't be eating fruits and vegetables at all, which is absolutely not the case. And so I think uh, there are certain foods that it warrants you know, paying the extra for organic, again, if that's in your budget, but if not, there's nothing wrong with conventional versions of, you know, produce or whatever type of food it may be. So that it ultimately comes down to a personal choice of, you know, do you want to pay more for this? And if you do, that's fine. That's great. Um, I, I, I hate to give such a generalized answer, but it's because it's, there are certain foods that I'm like, yeah, it probably pays to go for that. And there are others that aren't, I don't want to give a blanket recommendation, but it definitely, if you opt for the conventional version, there's nothing wrong with that. My favorite, my favorite phrase, phrase, and it applies to the organic thing though, is that uh, vegetables covered in cheese, ranch, or butter are better than no vegetables at all. And the same thing is, you know, conventional vegetables are better than no vegetables at all. 
Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you, Marilyn. That was uh, very yeah. helpful. I was taking notes on the side. Um, I'm excited to make my little charcuterie board lunch today after this. Um, we'll pass the mic to my co-chair, um, Carol, to introduce our ne next guest speaker from Trishik. Hi, everybody. I'm Carol, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. And we are so excited to have Trey Sheik uh, with us today with uh, Susan and Elizabeth, who are the dynamic duo, mom and da daughter, who own Trey Sheik, which is in Upper Car Kirby area. And it has been uh, nominated as the number one boutique to go to, a go -to place in Houston by the Houston Chronicle, favorite places, favorite boutiques. And you hear the word boutique and you think, ah, oh, expensive. No, not at Trey Chic. Uh, everything is wonderful, it's fun, and it's affordable. And um, they have really spent a lot of time and energy picking out the perfect uh, outfits and accessories, jewelry, purses, uh, cute, adorable clothes. Um, just anything that you might need and it's so fun and friendly because once you're in there if you leave come as a customer you're going to leave as a friend and I've certainly found that to be true and I recommend Trey Chic uh, to everybody I know and so uh, you're going to have so much fun today with them because they're going to tell us about trends and colors and fashion and it's going to be a real treat and so we're excited to pass it on now to Trey Sheik and thank you ladies for being here with us. Hi everybody let me get these girls in camera for you there we go. Hi everybody. Hello I'm Susan Kay. Hi. and this is Trey Sheik and this is my daughter Elizabeth Burr and we are the Trey Sheik owners very conveniently located here in Houston, so right across the street from the infamous Kirby Ice House, right next door to the nonprofit Rest for Success, <laughs> no problems there. And we are thrilled to be here. Carol, thank you for those wonderful, yeah. nice words that you said about us, and I'm sure they're all true. <laughs> uh, and here is Elizabeth. As you can tell, we're in a bit of an inconspicuous building, but you can always look for our signature turquoise door over here on underneath the tray sheet sign. And we always have an ever-changing flower wall. We're obviously ready for a little Valentine's Day love. It's here for your picture-taking pleasure, and it serves as a backdrop for all of our social media. You can find us at Tray Sheet Houston and follow along as we go through trendy Tuesdays. We're at Wednesdays where we show you how to wear the trends. We do some lives on Thursdays. We're going to have a fun one coming up tomorrow. And all kinds of crazy silly bits and suits. So it's definitely worth a follow. We wanted to show you guys the shop. So if you haven't been here, you can get the lay of the land. And if you have, we wanted to also show you we've been doing some renovations in 2020. So the silver lining of the pandemic is we've had the opportunity, the time, the space to do some renovations. So come on in and take a look. As you come in, we have Valentine's Day ready up here. We had the opportunity this season to completely change out our floors and lift up our ceilings, add in some fun neon signs, and we had some extra rolling racks built, which is really great. The space is streamlined and it's a lot more open. And we have this fun area in front where you can sort of play dress up. So why don't we jump right in? Thanks for having us, y'all. This is really fun. I've been asked to speak today about spring and summer trends, which is a blast. So I get to be, I guess, essentially your fashion translator. I get to sift through the crazy trends that we saw on the runway, like visible G-strings, bra tops, and insane cutouts. And I pick the trends that are A, going to be the most wearable and the most um, kind of accessible in your wardrobe. Okay, so trend doesn't have to be a bad word. Some of you are kind of like, oh, I'm not trendy. That doesn't really fit me. But I assure you, all of your closets are full of trends. So it's just a slight change in what's happening in style from season to season. In fact, you're going to see as I go through, I just chose four trends for us today, that they're all very palatable, that they're all very simple, and that you already have a lot of pieces that you can make work for the season. 
So I've got my two gorgeous models today. And we're going to be showing off a few of the styles. Now a trend is made up of four main components. It's made up of color. It's made up of print and pattern. It's made up of silhouette and it's made up of textures and embellishment. So it's pretty straightforward. So why don't we jump right into our first trend. Susan, as you saw earlier, is rocking this gorgeous jacket. This is a black and white graphic print. So black and white graphic is our first trend, okay? So there's a lot of ways you can do it. This particular jacket has an incredible cut, laser cut detail. So it looks almost like a lace. It's got that really beautiful juxtaposition between the white and the black. And she did not have to think one bit about what she put on underneath. She just did a black column and then pow, she's looking extra chic by adding one piece. So that's something to consider. Add one statement piece to your wardrobe that's gonna elevate an outfit in a moment. And we love a more is more moment. So she added, of course, our best selling acrylic lady handbag with a little touch of red and these amazing extra large acrylic striped earrings. So for a little print on print, again, adding that extra little graphic black and white to the outfit is an extra pop. So awesome, love that. Alex is here in a really gorgeous little dress we just got in. This is such an easy breezy style. I have a lot of petite saying, I cannot wear a big print, doesn't work for me. Well, this Miss thing over here is what, five four? Mm -hmm. And look at it, it does not overwhelm her. It's got that beautiful black and ivory print. It's got the graphic element, a little bit of a, uh, a nice ruffle here and that gorgeous kind of squared off back, make it something super special. And she decided to do a little pop here with her handbag, some really pretty beaded jewelry within that black and ivory, which I think was a really great element as well. Again, she's adding that graphic accessory with the graphic dress, but it's not overwhelming. So cute. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. So um, a micro trend that we're seeing with the black and white, I mean, you can do black and white by just doing a gray oversized Oxford shirt and a cigarette pant with a fabulous belt. It's as simple as that. Or you can start going with the graphic print. One of the prints that we saw on the runway is um, checkerboard. So that's kind of a nod back to that 90s feel. And I find checkerboard to be a pretty difficult print to wear. I find it to be enlarging um, and usually unflattering unless you're that very specific person. But our kind of take upon that is we just went with the classic gingham, which every girl should have in her closet. You still get the graphic black and white element, but with a very classic print. So if you don't already have a pair of stretch ankle gingham pants, you should have one. I think every girl should own this. It's so easy to wear. This one has a little slit here and a button detail. This you can just pair back to a solid black tee and all of a sudden you're looking super chic all together. It's definitely a statement look, but you could easily do this little jacket back to a white jean or a pencil skirt for work. So cute. So Alex's little piece, we love that print so much. We got this easy breezy little short two piece set. It's very cute together when it's tucked in, almost looks like a one piece. And then think about your pieces, how you can wear them separately. So this is such a darling little pull on short. Um, it's got that nice little curved seam here, which is very flattering on the leg. And that would be so cute back to a little black t-shirt and a slide just for every day going out. And then this top would be so darling back to a jean. So if you're not feeling the like whole black and white look, Think about little accessories. So something like this would be a really beautiful graphic element to add to your already wardrobe. Again, if you're wearing all black and add the little topper, it's such a chic one accessory way to update your outfit. This one is really cool too. It has a little pull through element so it stays on your body without you having to fuss with a wrap. One little micro trend within the black and white theme is you'll see a lot of piping. This particular pant does it really well, super chic. It's almost like that um, tuxedo look, I guess. But the piping detail you'll see on tops, dresses, and pants. This one is a nice little pull-on relaxed fit pant that I think is darling. Awesome. And so if you're not wanting to do that as much in your clothes, think about maybe adding an accessory. This is one of my favorite little color block bags. So chic against that super stark white back to the shiny black is such a beautiful pop. 
We also have something like this, casual everyday puffer gingham tote. I think this is so cute. It even works as a diaper bag. Um, I sold out of this in two seconds and the price point's really great on it and it holds a lot. So if you're that girl who carries a lot, this is a really great option for you. And again, if you're just doing t-shirts and jeans and you're super cash lifestyle, this would be a really fun thing to add. Okay, so as we're talking about color, we now are gonna move into one of the colors of the year, which is, so Pantone, if you don't already know, does colors of the year, colors of the season, and they have come out with actually a pretty poignant couple of colors for the year, which is illuminating yellow and ultimate gray, I believe it's called. And so that's really a cool thing. It's like this reflection of where we've come in 2020. We're coming out of this gray, horrible, traumatic pandemic and moving in. We're looking for this ray of sunshine and this, this beautiful illuminating yellow. It's like a hopeful color, right? It's like where we're going towards what we're hoping for for this year. And the runways were full of beautiful, bright tones, which we love. So the yellow itself is pretty difficult color to wear as well. So we chose our second favorite bright that was all over the runways, and that's this gorgeous bubblegum pink. So obviously, I was liking that. I added that in mind too. Susan is sporting an incredible jacket by the same maker as her first one. This is a really cool relationship we've built with this vendor. We get to work with her with the cuts and the um, textiles and actually really curate a collection for our shop specifically. So you won't see these coming and going. This is a wonderful jacket with the little accentuated ruffle collar here, very easy to wear, kind of a boxy style, but she kept it real trim underneath with her classic black, did all the fun pearls and of course the incredible handbag as a pop factor. So cute and how cute for Valentine's Day. Love it, thank you. Alex is sporting one of our favorite prints for the season. It has that Baylor green in it for you girls. It's this very cute, you're gonna see this kind of tiered sort of almost nod to a peasant dress um, coming in a lot. But I wanna just kind of give you a quick note on that when you're doing the peasant style tiered dress. Just look for something that does nip in a little bit um, under the bust or at the waist. So it gives you a little bit of shape and doesn't overwhelm the figure. This is such a cute clover print, has the little girly ruffle on it, and the length is great. I just think it's so cute, and we added the acrylic bag. And in the spirit of Valentine's, the adorable triple heart earrings, they're like $28. They're so cute, and come in red and pink. So cute. So everybody's ready for date night, it looks like. Where are we going? Um, if you want to add just a simple pink dress, something like this would be a great addition. It's conservative, it's an easy sheath style. It does have this light cover to the arm, which I know a lot of ladies are looking for. And this fun little micro pleat detail there. Keep your accessories simple and you're set to go. We also loved the clover print in this little top. I think this top is so easy to wear. It adds that infusion of the happy pink color has this light little ruffle, but it also, this print has black in it. So you can easily do it back even under a blazer for work or a Zoom meeting, hello, so cute for a Zoom meeting. Um, and it's just, this print makes me so happy. And that's what it's all about this season, you guys. It's about moving into things that create happiness. Let's move out of our loungewear for a moment and just start dressing um, in things that make us joyful. Here's another great option for pink. Again, it's that sheath dress style with the ruffle. A higher neckline here. This is a little bit more of a fitted look. And I paired it with the pearl and gold lariat. All right, so what do we have next? Oh, next. So we've talked about color for the season. Color, black and white graphic, hot pink, okay? A couple of other colors we're seeing really strong is the sorbets, um, which goes a little bit more to pastel. And then tangerine is really strong as well. So moving on to print and pattern, nothing new in floral print. Every spring and summer, we see floral prints. So that's nothing new, but each year we have a little bit of a different take. Last year, we saw small florals and paisleys, I'd say, um, and they were real dainty. That's not actually my jam. Like I'm a larger woman and I like a bolder print as is evidenced by my look today. Um, and I love bold and bright colors. So when you're thinking of your florals this year, think of the three Bs, big, bold, and bright, okay? And so one of our favorite prints is 
this one here. This is a cotton little top, button up top with the, again, you'll see so much, many of these little ruffles here. It has a bit of stretch to it, some nice seaming to it. And you can tell we've got all the bright colors and it's a little bit of a nod to the 70s. It's like that little, little bit of groovy without being costumey, right? So cute um, on the body. And I thought it would be darling, paired back to these Baylor Gold, shall we say? Little cropped pants with a wide cuff. So if you're feeling like you want to be super bright and bold and fun, this is such a cool combo. Or of course, this top is going to be fantastic with a white skinny jean for the season. Going off that illuminating yellow too, I had this piece, which was really fun. Again, if you don't wanna go super bright and do all the colors, this is a really nice, just two-tone piece. It has smocking at the top, a lot, nice little ruffle here. This is such just a little romantic day dress. And I think with a white slide or a white peeled sandal, it would be so, so cute. Um, okay, so last year we also saw really strong embroidery and that is moving through for sure to spring. So if you want to do your floral print with an embroidery, go for it. We've got so many beautiful pieces we just got in. This one has the floral embroidery all on the sleeve. And one thing to look for is that it goes to the back. That's just a nice elevated element. Has a little tie here. If you're good, again, if we're going to do a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, this is how you should do it. Okay, this is a white t-shirt with some fringe here, some fringe at the back. And of course, the insanely beautiful colors here, uh, the embroidery. And again, the price point won't break the bank. But instead of wearing your maybe Baylor tee <laughs> to the grocery store, throw this on. It takes just as much effort and you look effortlessly chic. This one is one of my favorites. This is our black, probably the only sweatshirt we have in the store. But again, if you're going to do a sweatshirt, let's make it awesome. And, and the embroidery does go to the back of the arm. The colors are fantastic super soft and comfy. And again, great price point on that. Okay, okay, what do we have girls? Oh, Susan's done floral in a really fun way today. She has floral on her pants. We love these pants so much. We brought them back for a second season. And I think this is so appropriate this year. With a black backdrop, it makes these pants super easy to wear. She added these incredible bow flats that we have in the store. And as a thank you to you guys, we have our Baylor Green, of course and she paired it on top of this beautiful blouse. It actually does have a stripe up the sleeve. So that's that black and white detail. It would be a great piece to add back into that black and white trend. And then all the fun white accessories. So chic, love it. All right, and here's that fun groovy print that we fell so much in love with. One thing I wanna talk about, if you're gonna do the big bright bold, just like Alex and like me today, you wanna to keep your silhouette very simple and very classic. She has the classic shirt dress with the self-tie belt. Obviously you could switch out that belt for a solid leather belt would be so cute. Everything this year seems to be belted. She did the pop of yellow here, the awesome little statement earring at her ears. And it is just, we fell in love with this when she put it on for the first time. The fit's really great. It feels great because it's got some little stretch to it and she's ready to go. <laughs> Same thing here. I did my big, bold, bright, all the three Bs in one piece. I also have the pink trend. And I'd say I also have the next trend that I'm going to talk about, which is in the silhouette category. And that is um, sort of historic silhouettes in feminine details. Okay. So the, how many times did you hear me say ruffle? I wish I counted. Oh, shucks. Um, I said ruffle on this, on this little video probably 20 times because almost everything has that little feminine ruffle detail. We're seeing a lot of the flutter ruffle sleeve like my dress. Lots of ruffles at the collar like I talked about. Um, ruffles on hem lines as well. And then other details that we're seeing are those little elements that make something special. So this dress, for instance, it's such a great dress. It's got the double V. It's got that tiered element that we talked about, the peasant dress thing. And then, but it's the bow at the shoulder that really makes this dress. Isn't that darling? I just think this is such a beautiful piece and it wouldn't be the same if it didn't have the bow at the shoulder. Here's another example of that tiny little feminine ruffle at the neckline and then the ruffle at the sleeve. It's those little special pieces that you wanna look for when you're shopping that really elevate an item. 
This one's one of my favorites. I think this print is super chic. I'm all for a chambray shirt. I wear it a lot, but this is a really special one because it's got that slight animal print. And the double ruffle here comes to a V, so it's very elongating and flattering on the body. And again, you want to look for stuff that goes all the way to the back, not that unfinished stop there. So really beautiful piece here. I feel like that could really take me around. Okay, we obviously liked this print a lot too. So this dress just came in. I sold it to one of my best friends for a wedding brunch. Again, the tiered detail, the beautiful classic tall tie at the waist. And this was a really fun top. We are still seeing some tops with the tie front. So if you like that look, this is a really beautiful option. Um, and this top, I just sold it yesterday, looks just exquisite and expensive on. So here at Tri Chic, we are obsessed with a, a bubble sleeve. It is such a cool way to add interest to an outfit, to a dress, to a top. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. This was a really great example of a classic eyelet dress, little baby doll style here, that again, wouldn't be that spectacular, except when you add that really beautiful draped bubble sleeve, it's really a special little piece. And this next one's not for everybody, but we here at the store really loved it. It definitely, some people aren't really feeling the 80s vibe of the puff sleeve, but we really enjoy that. This one is so cute. It's a great alternative to a white t-shirt again. Um, and then with just that little puff at the sleeve. And I like that they're doing those a little bit longer as well. So if you like a little bit more coverage, you have that option. And that comes in the white and in a beautiful hot pink as well. One of my personal favorites is this top here. Another um, thing that you'll see a lot of is smocking. This one has not only a bubble sleeve, but a pleated, accordion pleated bubble sleeve. And it is just super chic and elegant on. This one comes in plus sizes and in black and white. All right, so who do we have next? All right, Susan's rocking my same dress. If this print is too big and bold and for you, I totally get it. But this dress came in the classic navy, which is so beautiful on. And she totally jazzed it up in a fabulous way. She did the pop of orange here. And she kind of took that theme of the chain to her ears and, and to her handbag. And all of a sudden, she's just looking super chic. Again, she kept, it's about keeping the silhouette classic and letting the element stand out on its own. So cute. Okay, that little tie sleeve dress that I showed before, Alex is wearing the bestseller of it. It's black and it's blue and white. It has that nice little tie sleeve element. So easy breezy. I mean, I can tell she wants to twirl in it. <laughs> and it's got the coral little color pop at the bottom, which makes it also very special. And she kept it simple by adding the natural accessories with the hoop bamboo earrings, as well as the straw purse. When we're talking about accessories this season, we're talking about texture. So that's something to look for. A woven like that's going to be really special or a wonderful print like we talked about with the game. So good. So why don't we come on out and just say a big thank you to you guys. It's been a joy to be here. We're here for you guys. If you have any questions, same thing as Mary Ellen, feel free to pop them in the box and we're here to answer for you. In the meantime, I'd just like to say we would love to see you in the store curbside. We're offering virtual shopping as well. And as a great thank you to y'all for having us, we want to offer you 15% off either in store or online. You can use the code Baylor15 on the website, which is tracyhouston.com, and you get a one time 15% off. So that includes all of these pieces, but many, many more. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this has been a pleasure. So thanks for having us. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, any questions yeah. from anybody? Thank you, ladies. Oh my gosh, y'all did a yeah. great job. Yay. Oh, it's so fun. Thank we love you, it. Carol. Thank you, Alex, add, to add to it too. So uh, y'all just did a great job. Oh, thanks, That's, Carol. It's been fun. Yeah, any any questions from anybody? I think I see some in the chat box, Carol. Um, it looks like somebody asks, uh, what size range does Tracy carry? So we do, most of our items come extra small to extra large, but we definitely have a plus size section. So. Our plus size section goes up to 3X, and I think our pants go up to 16 right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely have some things for curvy girls. Great. Um, I think the other question was, um, 
if you could echo your three B's, big, bold, and what was your bright. third B? Bright. 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 Thank Color. you. Yes. Again, it's that like infusion of joy into the season. I love it. Um, wonderful. Beautiful pieces. I'm, I'm catching myself shopping online as you're talking, looking <laughs> through all of the things. <laughs> um, so we'll try not to do that the rest of the work day too much, ladies. Um, but um, the last question was, how long is the discount good for? Oh, we won't. We won't expire it. I mean, it'll be good for a few months. And you can use it one time. Wonderful. So do Go big, time. ladies. Go big in that one order. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, thank you all. Um, as Carol said, thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm glad that we connected and that everybody, it was exciting to see all the clothes because, you know, we're, we're so limited in the places we can go these days. So it's fun to, to dream big. And even if that means making something big, bold and bright in your own home, I hope we all do and kind of enjoy it a little bit. Um, so I think we're going to be uh, close to wrapping up here. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who was able to log on today. Yes. Um, and share with you all that we have a scholarship endowment for the women's group. And, and we are really um, hitting the pavement and trying to work towards growing that endowment so that we can support one more scholarship with that. Um, and so we have, I think, over 100 members right now in the Baylor Women's Group. So if you're already a member today, I wanted to kind of charge the group with, um, you know, make, making a gift, whatever that can be for you. If, if that's $100, if that's $500, um, if you can help, um, I know it'll make a difference. Um, and if you're not a member, um, again, we, we uh, really wanna echo the challenge of if you can help, we would love to see that today. And you can do so easily online um, and you can email Celeste or anybody at Baylor to come help you with that as well. Um, and with that, I also wanted to add our winner for today for the door prize for um, the diabetes cookbook is Lisa Ortega. So congrats, Lisa. Um, we'll send you an email after this and, and um, get your, I guess, preferred mailing address to make sure we can get that headed your way. Um, and Carol will close us out in prayer for today. So again, thank you, everyone. Hey, thank you again for being here. It's been a real fun, different experience, uh, but we're, we feel like that uh, we got a lot of wonderful information today. And so let us... Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Baylor University and for what Baylor means to so many of us. And thank you for Baylor holding the line in, in their Christian commitment. And we just pray for the staff and the administration and the students uh, as we all go through this very different uh, time in our, in our world. Um, but keep everybody healthy and safe and smart in, in our, um, what we do on day to day. And I just pray blessings over all of our um, Baylor people, Lord Jesus. And uh, Lord, I just pray for our country and uh, pray that you continue to keep your hand on us and, and bless our country. And we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen.